Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. Love Anderson Music Hall. Never has it rocked like it did tonight. <laughs> Miss Loretta Lynn. Now, I'm going to admit to all my viewers that I have been seeing her in concert <gasps> since I was nine months pregnant with Angela. Y'all know Angela's 40, so think about it. For 40 years, I've been traveling to concerts and seeing her. For 30 of those years, I've seen this young man. Let's talk a little bit about your 30 years with Loretta, what has it been like for you? Well, I'll tell you what, I treasure every single minute that I've spent on the road with her. When I, when she brought that up tonight, she doesn't usually bring that up. She doesn't usually talk about it. And on you stage. only look 29, so oh, you are how old? How old are you? Winning points early here. <laughs> Uh, you know, she said she is celebrating 50 years, mm -hmm. and when she said that, I thought tonight, wow, 30 of those years been I've been here. out here with her. Yeah. And she's been, to be honest with you, not only a good friend and boss, she's kind of been like a, a second mom to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a long, long time to work with somebody and, and to practically live with somebody like, right. as we do on the road. But she's a jewel. There's only one Loretta. And I feel so privileged to have spent all that time with her and look forward to stuff down the road. I, I can only imagine the day that her music stops because, you know, as a 40-plus year fan, I don't know that I can handle it emotionally when she doesn't turn anymore. Well, we talked about that on the bus the other night. I, I don't think I can handle what it. What is it going to be like? Mm, not it's good. Not good. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't mm -hmm. kind of... It's hard to think about that. Well, out of the six times we've seen her this past 15 months, tonight I think she was the best on top of her game, funny. She looked rested. Sure. She, to me, was better than ever. Well, let me tell you this. During this 50-year celebration, the last two months especially, she's had a media blitz. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. has been oh, yeah. pulling on her. You know, we want an interview, this, this, this. And I think through all of the attention she's been getting, she's kind of giddy. She's like a little kid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it has it's all about it spurred, her. It spurred some energy that uh, I didn't think was still there, mm -hmm, to be honest right, with you. Right. And all of a sudden, she's, she told me the other day, she said, Lee, I want to work more than we've been working. I and, love and she to said, hear that. I don't need to sit at home. What am I going to do at home? You right. know, and she's right. right. I mean, yeah. This is the thing that's going to keep her young. Yes. You know, yes. it's going to keep her uh, on top of her game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was music to my ears. I was glad that well, she said that. Well, I hope that this does encourage her because I have been a little nervous. Tonight, we had a lot of our viewers here who had never had the opportunity to see her. And I told them all on the air, I said, look, guys, face it, she's 75. 50 years in the business. We don't know how long she's going to be performing. True. So a lot of folks came tonight thinking, what if this is the last time she comes to Georgia? Oh, I know. Now, y'all are leaving tonight to go to Florida. Exactly. A long trip. Um, she will rest on the bus? She will. She, There's a good chance she might be already down. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Typically, after a show, she'll, uh, she'll eat her dinner. That's when she eats. Okay. And that's probably what she's doing right now. And as soon as she's done, we'll head down the road. She'll go to sleep, and the day will start all over again. Now, um, what is a typical week? Because you said y'all spend uh, downtime together, too. When you're not working, do you? This is a funny question. <laughs> do you practice, <laughs> or do you just wake up and know how to do this Actually, stuff? we don't practice okay. a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, at the beginning of the year, just about every artist will take the winter off, mm -hmm. or the bulk of the winter, mm -hmm. and start up around February or March. Uh, we will do rehearsals because a lot of times she'll want to put some older songs back in the show, right. songs we typically don't do, right. or maybe brand new songs. So that's when we do our rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Then periodically throughout the year, if we've got a long span of time off, we'll go out to her ranch, and she's got a little studio there that we gather in, and we'll go in and woodshed. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll mm -hmm. just kind of polish up what we already know. And um, that's kind of how that works as far as rehearsals. Well, I have been to Butcher Hall. I know where this woman started. Mm -hmm. To see the home and to see the surroundings and to see um, Uncle Herman's store still there, to see the things that she came from, do you think sometimes she looks around and says, man, I can't believe I'm here? Oh, she talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. I can't remember. It was one of her grandkids, I think, not long ago, came up to her and said, Mama, did you know that so-and-so said that 
you were really famous. <laughs> and she said, and I thought, hey? that was, thought that was so cute, you know. And uh, yeah, it is hard to believe, especially when you think about where she came from, mm -hmm. those early days. I mean, okay, 30 years, then that means you knew the man that I truly believe rescued her and gave her. Loretta Lynn, because she would never have stepped on stage without Doolittle's promoting what he saw at home when no. she sang to the children. And you know, I was around in those days, mm -hmm. and he was what motivated her. Mm -hmm. And he was the kind of guy, he was a quiet man. Was he proud of her? Tell me he very, was proud very. of her. Oh, there you. were times, one time we learned a gospel medley, just the background singers. There was, you know, Peace in the Valley and songs like that in the medley. And we would come out front, and I saw him one time at the end of our show when she finished with How Great Thou Art, and then we backed her up on that. And he had tears just streaming oh, down his face. Oh. He was as proud as he could possibly be. And he wasn't very outgoing. Mm -hmm. he, he was, like I said, soft-spoken, but yet he knew that everybody in this band and everybody that's on the road gave our all. And we supported her, we were loyal to her, and she's been loyal to us. I mean, uh -huh. obviously, I've been around 30 years. Right. And it's always been truly like one real family on the road. And I've been around long enough to know that every band out there, it's not that bad. Uh, no. I mean, sometimes there's this, you know, a lot of discord. But in this group, it's always been like one tight, bonded family. As many, time, as many times as I've seen her, my favorite performance, any, out of live, television, whatever, is the one that she sings, Love is the Foundation to Doolittle, later in his life. Yes. And he tears up, she tears up, I cry like a baby. Yep. I mean, Love is the Foundation is my <clears throat> ultimate, all-time, forever Loretta Lynn song. I love that, too. Where did that come from? Because many of her songs were written about her life. Was yeah. that song written about her life, or did a, a, did somebody else write it? Somebody it else to her? wrote that okay. song. Uh, there's a, and his last name was Hall. I want to say Rich. I can't recall his first name, but I've met the guy. A very mm -hmm. nice man. And uh, I think it's just one of those songs that she put on a record. And she really grew to love. It is the best. And it's perfect for it her. It is perfect. Absolutely. And to see her sit and sing to do little, I just, man, I mean, it brings cold chills to you. Oh, yeah. Okay, you were there when he went on to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Loretta went into a quiet time. She did. And a restful, did she ever think about giving it up then? You know, at one time, we all thought that she might stay at home. Mm -hmm. And... I think that she got to a place, because we did, we stopped down for a long time where we didn't go out and tour much at all. I think she got to the point to where she knew unless she got going again, it could just be the death of her. Right. And she did not want that. Right. She didn't want that. So she uh, hopped back in the studio, started brushing up again on stuff that she had done in the past and was eager to learn new material. And she got the band back together, and she said, I'm going for it. And she said, I want to do it the way I've always done it, because it's the way he would want me to right, do it. Right. I think he would have been so disappointed to see the love of his life not share what she, you know, it's like who she is. Yeah, it's exactly. who she is. To see the give back tonight from the audience. Yeah. Because tonight, a little girl was sitting on my lap who's been on my show three times. The deal was she came on the show the first time, and I think she did a Patsy Cline song. And I said, okay, honey, that was really, really good. If you'll learn a Loretta Lynn song, I'll let you come back. <laughs> well, her mom called me in two weeks and said, Bailey has learned two Loretta Lynn really? songs. I said, okay. To see the audience tonight, a three-year-old child yeah. loves her. Right. A 90-year-old lady loves her. Right. There's right. nobody that she doesn't reach and communicate with. And tonight, the, the audience gave her back all that love. They sure did. This was a great audience here tonight. And it's consistent with Loretta. It's like that everywhere that we go. Uh -huh. You know, some nights are better than others. You know, uh -huh. that this crowd was especially 
responsive tonight, mm -hmm. and it's always good. Honey, it's because I beat him. I met him at the door and said, if you don't clap and jump up and down, I'm going to whip you So I had this one queued up. <laughs> well, you did good. I did good. You sure did. This is a night um, to celebrate 50 years of Loretta Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, to have her here in Georgia, I remember the time she was here and there was no air conditioning. Oh, yeah. Now, I've been to Hurricane Mills, yeah. and there is no air conditioning. Right. And those are the most uncomfortable seats in the world. Yes, and are. I still tell my viewers to go there. Yeah, what yeah. is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with me? Well, it's a summertime thing. I think we do about four shows a year there. Mm -hmm. And it starts Memorial Day. Right. And the last one we wrap up the end of September. And she has a pool there. She has ponds. She has canoeing, uh, right. horseback riding. And so it is really an outdoor atmosphere anyway. And so I don't think people mind that. I, there's something special about it sitting outside in the hot air. You know? Well, we came up and shot a lot of footage in July, and we showed, my favorite footage, I think, was of the horses in the creek. Uh -huh. Because when we brought it back, people saw a whole new level. You don't have to go there just to see a concert. Right. We encouraged people to go and just spend the week. Oh, sure. There's a lot to do there. There's a lot to do. And she has a motocross there, you know, that's real popular. And she has events all during the year uh -huh. uh, at her little amphitheater where we perform with, with other artists as right. well. Now, the, t the last time we went, I think I'd been there three times before I ever took time to see the museum. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the museum and the history in that museum. Yeah. Well, it's a, a, amazing. a lot of times, tonight, for instance, uh, as I was packing up on the bus, there were several people that came up to me that gave me little things to give to Loretta. Mm -hmm. She treasures that stuff, and that's what she has in her museum. Mm -hmm. She has pieces like that. You know, books or dolls or what have you. Just mm -hmm. things that mean something to her. And she won't let us throw anything away. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is, you know. Maybe hoarding. She could be on the hoarding program. <laughs> <laughs> but the museum is special. It's got... Uh, a couple of old buses that I used to travel in. And her Mercedes. Now her Mercedes. I'm a Mercedes girl. I'm a Mercedes I love guy. Mercedes. Oh, I gosh. Love, I too. love her Mercedes. Now, that was a gift from Doolittle for what, their anniversary? Right. Yeah, the gold one. I remember when he bought uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. yep. Incredible. Okay, knowing him and, and knowing the kind of man he was, um, I have seen Cole Miner's daughter probably uh, 85 to 100 times. Wow. I loved Tommy as he portrayed Doolittle. Was that a true portrayal of Doolittle? Yeah, I thought it was an excellent portrayal. Mm -hmm. I honestly do. Uh, of course, I didn't know Mooney when he was that young, of course, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that was. And not only that, Sissy. And I had a chance to meet Sissy on two or three different occasions. Love Sissy. She's my favorite. Yeah. Love her, love her. Love Betty Sue. Well, love him. I'll love tell you him. a quick story. Uh, we were in Richmond, Virginia the first time I met Sissy. She came out on the bus and, you know, Loretta introduced her to me and everybody. Mm -hmm. And she asked Sissy, would you want to come out and sing three or four songs? So she said, well, sure. And, of course, the band uh, would know what to play and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. When she came out and sang, of course, I had to sing background parts with her. I'm, I swear, it was almost like if I wasn't looking, it was just like singing with Loretta. Yes. And it was spooky. Yes. <laughs> All of her inflections and everything. She traveled with Loretta for about a full year before they shot the film. So she really got to know her little, you know, innuendos, everything, everything about her. And so uh, that was an amazing thing. And like you, I thought the movie was... The movie is incredible.